Sir, what uh, our uh, principal ma'am has joined? No, I don't think she's not there. Uh, OBG and uh, yeah. Omita, sir. Omita, Achha, nahi, Omita, sir. Uh, can you tell when that uh, pencil memo will join? She's supposed to join now, no? Na? She was scheduled to join at 10 30. Okay, okay. But we can start now. Okay. Mm. So uh, we start the program. Okay, sir. Okay. Hmm. okay. Good morning, everybody. I am Dr. Shukalpa De. On behalf of Dr. B.C. Rai Engineering College, Durgapur, I welcome you all in this webinar on 21st century skill development in the light of AICT Idea Lab. In today's contest, particularly in India, skill development among youth is of utmost importance and government of India is giving due importance in this regard through many schemes like Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yajna. In the new education policy of government of India, also this has been aptly stressed. To acquaint you all regarding various aspects of skill development, this webinar has been organized under the ages of research and development cell of Dr. B.C. Roy Engineering College. It is my honor to request Professor Dr. Chandan Kumar Ghos, head of this cell and also principal of Dr. B.C. Roy Polytechnic College to enlighten with few words in this occasion. So, sir, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Good morning. Sir. Good morning and I, I welcome everyone to this session. So it's my pleasure to be present virtually here in this program. And it is very unfortunate that all academic programs, including our teaching and learning processes, are being conducted in the virtual mode due to this national emergency for prevailing COVID-19 pandemic. But we hope that our country shall come out of this predicament soon. So I am the head of the Department of Research and Development Cell of Dr. Bishirai Engineering College. On behalf of our department, I heartily welcome all the participants and attendees in this program. And I convey my sincere thanks to the respected principal of Amrita Vidalayam for taking initiative for this program. I am thankful to the organizing committee of our research and development cell and also Mr. Amitabh Ghosh for arranging such a good technical awareness program, even in the harsh pandemic period. We will discuss on 21st technology and beyond. In this program, we will discuss the technology on 21st century and beyond. Uh, but I am very happy today to see a number of interested and enthusiastic students from Amrita Vidalam. Already 65 students have already joined. Okay, that's good. And we are delighted to have with us Dr. Saurav Ranjan Das, Dr. Kamalika Tewari, and Dr. Obhijit Banerjee, all of from Bishira Engineering College as speaker of this program. So I am very hopeful that the participants and attendees will gain enough technical knowledge 
and experience today on the topic of 21st century skill development in the light of AICT idea lab, which I'm sure they can utilize in their respective areas of interest. Recently, our institution, that is, that is Dr. B. Sirai Engineering College, got a fund from AICTE, Government of India, for idea development, evaluation, and application lab. So it is called Idea Lab. Under the scheme of Atmanirvar Bharat. So this concept of Atmanirvar Bharat came from our Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Dhamadar Modi. The main concept of this sophisticated laboratory is to develop the technical skill of the students, both schools and colleges, of the surrounding area and beyond that. We are committed to develop this prestigious laboratory and work 24 into 7 towards the technical enrichment of the surrounding students. We will issue certificates to the participants in different technical events in the name of AICT Idea Lab, which are valid for all over India. So I am not going to take many more time today. And I will request the organizers to begin the program. I hope that everyone, everyone attending this webinar on something new and useful regarding our idea. Please stay safe to secure, wear a mask, and maintain social distance. We hope to organize more events like this in the physical mode post pandemic. So with this hope, I would like to take leave from you. So thank you, Jaihin. What to support for that? Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for such uh, uh, your talk. And uh, just I asked Mr. Amitabh Ghosh, sir, that whether the principal ma'am joined or not. Principal has joined. Okay, okay. Thank so you. Join, join and then left again. Oh. Maybe there may be some emergency work that she has to do right now. So that is why she is not able to join right now. So we can continue our program. So definitely she will come back. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, very much for your kind words. You have set the tune of the program. Now, without further delay, I take the opportunity to introduce today's first speaker, Dr. Shoura Branjan Das. Dr. Shoura Branjan Das has a distinguished academic career, completed MSc from IIT Kharagpur and obtained PhD from IIT Bombay. He is the associate professor of Dr. Bisiroy Engineering College in the Department of Basic Science and Humanities. He has more than 20 years teaching experience and also actively involved in research in synthetic organic chemistry and nanotechnology. Dr. Das is not only the teacher in charge of the Department of Chemistry, but also members of many institutional level committees. His academic and administrative experience had made him an eminent personality, personality in his field. Now I call Dr. Das to take over the deliver and play session and deliver his lecture. Over to you, Dr. Das. Thank you, madam. So, uh, CKG sir and all the dignitaries and my dear students, those who have joined. So, let's start my PowerPoint presentation so that we can have a discussion regarding this skill development. As Horov said, uh, yeah. sorry to you. Uh, I want to know from the students, anybody of you, that uh, do you have any problem to uh, understand? Any student? No, sir. 
uh, one minute Perfect. one minute uh, if the students have some questions regarding the lecture after the lecture you may ask the question to our sir and he will give the answer okay thank you okay if you have any difficulty you can just uh, tell me in between also if you have any difficulty understanding okay if the speed is very fast or if it is very slow you can just mention that well now let's start the session is the screen visible clearly yes sir okay i want to do all of you you may not be knowing so that's why i'm telling you so in this you will find there are two sort of agendas one is presentation screen another is the screen only just take the presentation screen you pin the presentation screen so that it, it is will visible to you if you, you have to pin the presentation screen yes sir we have done So this is the 21st century skill development in the light of AICT Idea Lab. Now, AICT Idea Lab, what is that? We have got a funding from AICT into our BC Engineering College, and a new lab is going to be established. So, uh, any innovative ideas, new innovative ideas, are always welcome there. See, always it is not necessary. that research will be something very high fi or something very big other is it is not a research sometimes very very small thing can be useful and we can actually use in our everyday life so it is much better compared to something very high fi cannot use at all so application nowadays is very much important and government is also giving uh, taking interest in that type so any type of research which is actually useful in our everyday life so that will give the creativity and success say starting from the beginning is a history that uh, is a very small thing small gadgets like bulb okay without bulb you see the situation without light so that is the first uh, innovation that type of thing innovation that made the people's life much uh, better or much uh, livable so there is a small small instrument like microwave oven this is very much useful but it is very simple thing there spectacles refrigerator umbrella these are all innovations innovation and invention their invention ultimately became innovative so some lot of innovative small small ideas can be very much useful for our everyday life so covid 19 diagnostic system this is latest one so these are all small things which are very much useful like a list of uh, things are there small smart toothbrush smart stick so there is a list actually i don't want to read out there is a list you can see yourself these are all small small innovative ideas which is very much useful in our everyday life it may be from chemistry field it may be from uh, electronics field doesn't matter and all nowadays interdisciplinary subject is becoming very very important chemistry may uh, combine with electronics electronics may combine with civil engineering so this type of that uh, multidisciplinary subjects and some materials which is multidisciplinary actually becoming much more useful <clears throat> some of the examples smart stick this is for blind person the stick is made in such a way that it will give a sort of vibration it will have a water sensor it will have a whether there is a uh, how much depth is there it is a sensor so uh, it can um, give the alert to the blind person that what is what is there what is there okay in front so that is called smart stick it is electronic device very small electronic device and very simple also but it is very much useful you can understand yourself see the water bottles are there everywhere the design of this water bottle by kille that design was very important which is a very small thing but if you have the innovative idea uh, you can apply here and there so this is one of the modified uh, the design of the bottle which was found to be much much more effective compared to our bottles earlier snake stick 
So into that crop field, sometimes so many farmers are actually dying because of snake bite every year. So that's why some innovative idea. There is a that it will create some frequency of vibration, and no snake will come nearby. Snake, rat, all will go away because this is actually we may not understand, but they are very much sensitive. The snake and rat, they are very much sensitive. So this vibration will keep them away. So these are all small innovative ideas which is applicable into our everyday life. E car, electronic car. So now, uh, normally we know there is, if you go for any type of car, we have to have an engine. But there is a single engine and that is giving uh, that thrust to the wheel. But that there is a loss, mechanical loss, electrical loss. Here, some innovative idea. If you can put that uh, wheel and the motor in such a way, each and every wheel has a small, small motor. So that will give direct uh, impact to the wheel and the car will run and without any law, mechanical or electrical losses. So efficiency will be much better. And we need the more efficient one because this type of car, electronic car, like battery driven or solar driven, then uh, the energy is not very high. We cannot gather that much of energy. So if the energy loss is minimized, then it will be much better idea. See, some flying car, future proposal. Small, small drones is already coming in the market. So for carrying pizza or desserts to, to your house. So directly you just make a phone call and from the um, that uh, pizza hut or um, uh, Domino's pizza, maybe the drone will carry the this one. And it may be uh, small, small such designs which are becoming very much effective. Fuel cell car. Fuel cell is a, actually hydrogen or um, methanol type of fuel can be used as a, um, that, that type of fuel can be used to prepare electricity and by that electricity your car will be running. So that is the, called, the idea called fuel cell car. Small, small such gadgets are there. We actually, the uh, research is going on in different uh, and some people has pay, already applied for patent also. So, it is quite efficient, but uh, the research is still going on. Actually, initial investment is a bit high and uh, the fuel cell is not yet becoming very much popular because of the initial investment. Now, features of electricity as a fuel. So, whenever you are using electricity as a fuel, so no warm up, run almost silently, immediately, there is uh, excellent performance electrical car will have no uh, that um, the pollution it will not create any sort of pollution and there are a lot of benefits there are some advantages but uh, there are some disadvantages also obviously just like any material so there is some advantages and some disadvantages so <coughs> it has a limited range that is the disadvantage means it cannot go a very long distance because battery may be drained out so battery is a very limited storage capacity and it has a very limited life also. Life period is also not very long. So there is some electric car has come from Mahindra already. Okay. So this is some lithium ion battery and it will be charged and uh, but the only problem is cannot run very long. So charging is equal. Lot of charging stations should be there in the uh, high capacity charging stations should be there so that the charging can be done in a small time. So that's a real uh, hurdle. <clears throat> but this is actually future. It will come because our you know that uh, petrol and coal that this type of fuels are getting consumed day by day and conventional fuel will no more be available within a few years. Then future is uh, this type of vehicles only now there is a planning of hybrid car hybrid car just like it will run by electric motor as well as a gasoline motor suppose in a way the electric uh, battery is gone or it is drained out then by uh, gasoline only it can be uh, it can run so that's called a hybrid car so design is something like this so it is there there is electric motor and there is a internal combustion engine both 
So it will be very costly. That's uh, obvious because both engines, double engine is there. One is electric motor engine, another is in the internal combustion engine, and it will be in, uh, a bit uh, large also the car because the both these things will fit. So that's still research is going on so that it can be made compact and cheaper. So solar energy, solar car, uh, and the rooftop there is a photovoltaic cell. So photovoltaic solar cells are converting sunlight into electricity, and that is the how it works. On the top of the that uh, car, there is a solar panel, and the solar panel will um, produce the electricity, and your car will run by this way. So if there is a battery pack, and when there is no sunlight, the battery can run the car also uh, for some period. So total the solar the data in so through the battery it is running. So and it can run in the night time also if there is a battery is charged fully some advantages of this type of car eco-friendly and quite no fuel cost driving comfort energy availability but, and uh, there is uh, no cost also for the energy because energy is free it is coming from solar but initial investment is high there are some disadvantages also expensive battery battery life Okay, energy storage capacity, design challenge, and battery life. These are the disadvantages. Hydrogen fuel cell. Hydrogen used as a fuel into the fuel cell. It is producing electricity. There are some uh, that chemistry related research also here that um, some specific type of catalysts are produced. That catalyst will um, efficiently convert the hydrogen into electricity. So. And um, that's a very good idea. But the problem is how do you prepare hydrogen? The main problem is how do you get the hydrogen? So hydrogen will be, you have to prepare from the um, water and not ordinary water. It should be marine water will be much better because it is a conducting water. So by electrolysis of marine water, we can produce hydrogen and that hydrogen can be sealed into some cylinder. And from that uh, hydrogen cylinder, we can car around the vehicle. That's the idea. But for this uh, electricity uh, that will be used to break the green water into hydrogen gas, that also will need electricity. And that electricity will come from solar uh, panels. There should be solar system. And from the solar system, you, can, you have to produce the hydrogen energy and then uh, hydrogen gas. And that hydrogen can be used as a fuel. And it will produce electricity. And the car will run by the electric motor. This is the vehicle. <coughs> okay, more or less, this is the design. This is the actually different type of ideas I'm giving you. So, what can be the future research? Now, I'm coming for a specific, uh, some chemistry related problem. I'm from chemistry. So, now this is my field. So, plastic waste management. So nowadays, government of India is taking a lot of initiative regarding this waste to wealth because we don't have place to dump the waste. The waste land day by day is decreasing and we actually cannot dump it here and there. It will create a lot of pollution and it is not hygienic also. And the land area becoming uh, reduced. So waste land, there is a lot of trouble. Those who are nearby locality, uh, they will face a lot of problem. People will give objection also. So dumping into some ground is not the ultimate solution. So that's why different type of technologies are coming to convert this waste into wealth. So to convert this plastic into different type of uh, useful things. Okay. So see, there are different type of plastic we are using. Plastic bottles, for example. Shampoo is coming into a bottle. That water is uh, coming to bottle. Cold drinks is their plastic bottle. Now, what we will do, how do you dispose all these plastic bottles that will is actually creating a lot of trouble into our everyday life? So, um, nowadays, uh, that uh, everywhere in the municipality corporation, that take the planning to segregate at the source these plastic materials and then it will undergo recycling. But recycling also has its own limitation because recycled plastic is not as good as the virgin plastic. And virgin plastic cost is very low. And recycling also has a limitation that uh, collecting, collection, segregation, separation of these different 
um, that recyclable materials are costly and sometimes it is more costly compared to the raw material cost of the virgin plastic also so that's why this is not becoming popular so new technology are coming that how can we convert all these things into not the plastic but convert this thing into raw material of the plastic maybe the gas itself hydrocarbon gas mixtures okay that is the new technology so one of such technology plastic waste it is coming under the plastic waste management so this is uh, in collaboration with national rail and transport institute and some uh, university into um, chhattisgarh so they have done some sort of plastic management so that i'm going to show you the next slide so actually how the plastic waste management occur so you have some old technology and some new technology old technology is called conventional so conventional technology will be recycling incineration landfilling recycling means using the plastic and convert them into some other uh, material of the same plastic so plastic is not changed just uh, you are molding and melting and making some remolding and making some new material out of it that is recycling now incineration we are burning the plastic so that it will be not creating any more trouble but it will create some gas also that gas mixture you have to um, that uh, absorb into some tower these things are actually becoming uh, more, more difficult uh, and this conventional tax technology actually has some limitations now landfilling you have holes or uh, some um, under the ground we make some chamber and put the plastics over there and cover it up so that is called landfilling actually after incineration some residue may be formed some ash will be there and that ash will be able to put into the landfilling landfilling is nothing but some um, cover the disposal uh, chamber so in the disposal chamber you have to dispose the unwanted material like ash after incineration and then cover it up and landfilling can be for degradation of the biodegradable materials also creating some uh, making some compost material some uh, leachates liquid and uh, some disposables so <coughs> recycling incineration and landfilling they are the actually conventional technologies now new technologies are thermochemical treatment polymer blended bituminous loads so thermochemical treatment means with the chemical and heat we can convert them into something useful polymer blended bituminous road nowadays not only bituminous along with that some plastic bottles is made uh, after melting is mixed with the bitumen and you can make the road you can cover the that potholes can be filled the potholes can be filled with this plastic uh, blended with bituminous so that type of road is found to be uh, more um, long lasting compared to only ordinary bituminous road because this bituminous road uh, in the rainy season if there is a plastic material blended with bituminous that will repel the water in a much better manner and that's why the road will be much better long lasting one so <clears throat> it can be co processed in the similar kilns also now this thermochemical treatment can be two types one is pyrolysis just the heating pyrolysis means heating degradation by heating and plasma pyrolysis is in absence of air by using carbon arc by using carbon arc that is uh, called plasma condition very high temperature and without the presence of air just to, in the absence of air the polymeric or plastic material converted to gas or uh, liquid fuel okay gas gaseous liquid fuel a mixture of them can be generated that is called plasma pyrolysis so pyrolysis and plasma pyrolysis now plastic is actually becoming a threat day by day ground water sea it is creating soil pollution it is a uh, pollutant and these plastics are actually like plastic packets the carry bags that is coming from the market every day people are just throwing it here and there so it takes very very long time to degrade and it uh, sometimes it is uh, it is taking hundreds of years to mix it into the soil so it is uh, even after 100 year if you take out The, from the ground you can find some old plastics are still there into some small small pieces it is actually uh, maybe broken into small small pieces parts but still it is there it is not totally mixed with the soil so that's why plastic so long lasting things and that is giving pollution and it has a lot of uh, impact 
so the rainwater is refilling the ground um, uh, the aquifer underground the aquifer is actually filling up in the rainy season but because of the plastic the water cannot percolate through the ground so it is getting uh, stopped there so water is not refilled properly now in the if it goes into the uh, that the drainage system it will block the drainage so plastic has a lot of problem so uh, that uh, different marine animal you can see here there is a marine animal so if they are consuming plastic so they are giving it dying they are actually dying like well uh, shark or that type of any animal the marine animal because of the pollution in the marine world huge amount of plastic is actually there into the ocean so and it is found that the aquatic animals are or getting diseased or getting died so uh, recycling of virgin plastic we can do two to three times only and it deteriorates the quality because uh, if you apply heat the sometimes the polymeric chains are getting uh, fragmented and that's why it deteriorates and so it is not a safe and a permanent solution ultimately you have to dispose if you recycle also still you have to dispose so only 60% of the plastic produced are recycled 70% plastic packaged products are converted to plastic waste in a source pan so most of the plastics ultimately you have to dispose so how do you do it so that's why beta technology is coming now major problem so recycling or reusing of plastic mixed plastic waste how do you do it commercially viable because when you are getting a mixed plastic waste it is like this you can see the dumping down so how is the plastic dumped here so how do you separate them segregation and separation is a real tough problem so that's why municipality is taking a project nowadays giving different colored dustbins and plastic or recyclable materials will be put into one dustbin the degradable biodegradable materials like vegetable pilafs and uh, fruit spill will be kept into another one so that is uh, converted into uh, compost manure that is can be another one so and uh, that is uh, very much toxic and hazardous materials will be kept into um, uh, another um, that uh, hat or um, your dustbin so different colored dustbins are that way they are purposefully but really it is collection at the source separation at the source is really very difficult because people are not still uh, that much uh, aware of the problem so they are just dumping whenever they need anywhere that jumping and you huge amount of such garbages are actually not separable so easily so this is the situation which is not hygienic also this type of separation is uncomfortable job and it is not hygienic also that's why new technology is required so automatic segregation technology has come so that is doing it automatically just like this you see the diagram so the segregation separation is done automatically it is not at all uh, and some segregation technologies are also using turbo the tribo charging and electrostatic separation biological treatment to separate the engineered nanomaterial from municipal solid waste and so on so ldp hdp all these type of plastics are kept into one side and other things biodegradable things are kept in this another one so automatic segregation is becoming uh, important day by day but it is actually initial investment is high that's why it may not be always economically feasible everywhere <clears throat> so this is uh, the problem actually wide variation of composition see you a particular temperature and pressure is not suitable for all the plastics if you want to convert the plastic into something useful gas or liquid it is called plastic oil the liquid is called plastic oil if you want to convert this plastic into some liquid oil so it is not always a particular temperature pressure sufficient because different type of plastics are actually there into your garbage it is mixed together so separate and particularly it is not possible to separate each and every individual so and decomposition rate is different for different type of plastic polythene temperature and polypropylene temperature it is different polyvinyl chloride temperature requirement is different so decomposition rate for different type of polymers is different so that's why you cannot fix up a particular um, temperature that uh, all the polymers will be properly degraded and that's a real challenge okay so now now it is new technology 
that's why required and one of such new technology that is in applied into uh, this collaboration of these two departments one is the national rail of transport institute and one university that is chhattisgarh university so they have actually combined way doing this using this technology and this under research it is called thermocatalytic depolymerization technology <coughs> see what is thermocatalytic de depolymerization technique so the monomer uh, as the polymerization is this the monomer small small uh, unit they are just getting combined to give a polymer this is the process so like this ethylene to polythene now this is just the opposite way thermocatalytic depolymerization means using catalyst and heat the polymer chain is broken or fragmented into small small uh, thing like uh, pyro gas and pyro oil so the, it is actually fragmented in the middle the chains are broken by applying heat and sometimes with the help of catalyst also so reaction temperature is, overall range is 30, 350 to 450 degrees centigrade is used so and it is found to be quite successful this tcd process is found to be quite successful so what are the schematic representation of the tcd technology the th thermocatalytic decomposition technology so first of all plastic waste is undergoing shredding shredding means cutting into small small pieces and then it is going to the reactor so then car, that reactor will give the there is a gas separator so in the reactor actually heating is done so gas burner is actually heating so heating the reactor so the pyrolysis is gone so after that pyrolysis gas separator and oil condenser there are two chambers are there one is gas separator that will collect the gas and another chamber is there that is the oil condenser so it will collect the oil so finally you are getting the pyro oil as the fuel and here there is a third material that you get that is a carbon discharger so that is a black colored peach like carbon uh, deposit that you get as a byproduct so mainly what is our interest to get the gas portion and the oil portion and that also can be this carbon discharge is also can be mixed with the bitumen and fill up the path holes so that is also not totally useless so everything that you get here by uh, separation or the decomposition of this polymeric material you see it is um also useful every portion is useful the oil that can be used into um, vehicle the gas that is used as a fuel that here you see the gas collected from here that is itself burning the reactor means heating the reactor so the gas collected over here it is recycled back so it is burst it is separately you don't have to use any fuel so in the gas burner if we can send the gas so it will react and it will burn and it will heat the the reactor chamber so pyrolysis will be continued so it is a also a sort of recycling process and so continuously will get in the oil corners the pyro oil so by the tcd technology so that is a new technology actually plasto oils are generated by this one so from plastic from garbage you actually you are getting some plasto oil and this is running into the, the it is actually some trial run taken into the vehicle and found to be successful and see the process how it is going on so municipal uh, mixed plastic waste cleaning then shredding then feeding into thermochemical depolymerization uh, plant tcd uh, plant then heat supply separation of condensable and non-condensable gas which is non-condensable gas that is used as a gas only so that is itself can, you can return back to the plant for heating and the liquid oil that is collected it will it is called plasto oil so it is and uh, stored okay and it can be used as a vehicular fuel so accepted feed for better yield and high quality plaster oil so different type of material different type of plastics that can be used for this make, making this plaster oil milk bag food bag cooking oil plus a uh, lot of plastic uh, that list is there you can see yourself i don't need to read out all these plastics can be converted to plaster oil by using this technology that is called tcd technology so plaster oil so um, uh, each ton from one ton of plastic uh, producing more or, more or less 600 to 650 liter of the plaster oil and 20 to 25 percent of this is used in the 
PCD process is that the pyro gas 20 to 25 percent gas is recycled. It is actually heating the the pyrolysis chamber itself. After collecting the gas, it is burning and it is heating the uh, your um, pyrolysis chamber. So blasto oil is actually our final product, which is in, uh, important because we, this can be used into the uh, vehicle. Pyrochar is 5 to 10 percent uh, the residual char is called biochar that is in, can be mixed with the bitumen and for making the road it can be used so five to seven hours for complete tcd process for one batch so one batch one ton will produce 600 to 650 liter of the plasto oil and giving other byproducts which are also useful and it takes around five to seven hours for one complete batch it's a batch process here we'll have to fill up that take that one ton and from that one ton, you are getting this much of things. And what are the raw material that you are using? Different type of garbage plastics that is actually not useful. It's just you are dumping here and there. Instead of dumping here and there, we can use that plastic materials and convert that into plasto oil, which is uh, very, very good because we are actually preparing something useful from something useless. And that way, the plastic disposal problem also will be Mm, totally stop because carry bags all micron thickness we can use so that's a real headache that what to do with these carry bags that also we are using here in the tcd technology so this is a plant design actually how the tcd plant is there actually the plant is it is a pilot plant actually it is not the uh, industry plant it's a pilot plant so uh, more or less um, so what is the, the name yeah. of this plant PCD technology. Name of this what? This plant. This plant. Oh, that is TCD plant. It, that is uh, TCD is what? TCD is your uh, thermocatalytic decomposition. That plant. Thermocatalytic decomposition plant. And this UPS along with uh, the railway board, they combine way University of Petroleum and Energy Studies. It is at Dehradun, Uttarakhand. So then they have uh, this this plant they have actually put there to run the in the pilot scale. So whether it is becoming effective or not, actually plastic is converted into oil. How much is it effective and how much oil you are getting? That type of running you have to take first, and then only the patent can be taken, and then people can actually use. So nowadays, uh, the, any type of research is useful. Only if it it can be um, it can be taken into our everyday life. It is not just for pen and paper. So some testing has been done with plaster oil. Okay, that you the same university only. That uh, engine research testing at engine research lab. So it is a research lab actually. So they are actually the engine is taken the bike engine. It is. Uh, and practically the trial line was taken for three helia two helia etc combustion and finally found to be quite successful it's quite good so where you can use actually the plasto oil cooking stove industrial boiler agricultural pump in, uh, that industrial furnace <coughs> industrial furnace automotive sector so <coughs> Gensex for service sector, okay, cooking stove, industrial boiler, agricultural pumps, industrial furnace, automotive sector means uh, vehicle. Not only vehicle, actually, so many use are there for these plasto oils. Multiple number of use are there. You can see yourself what are the use. So now from the plastic, the oil can be made, and that oil can be used in so many different areas. But uh, only problem still, I am telling you the collection at the source collection of the fuel at the source is the that uh, raw material the plastic itself getting the plastic huge quantity of plastic raw material collection from different uh, households that is a real difficult job <coughs> for that planning is required so mixed plastic waste collected by street boys so this way this plastic pa um, packets or uh, bottles everything are actually the people are collecting maybe you have seen so where these things are going actually they are 
so far it was for recycling now this can be used for this by using new technologies it can be actually converted into oil which is very much useful because oil we real scarcity is there day by day the petrol diesel cost is increasing and you can see the situation after some year actually the petrol diesel maybe may not be available at least to some extent um, this type of un unused material or something useless material we can convert into something very much useful some oil at least can be prepared by this way <clears throat> and it can be made very small scale also every uh, school uh, school college if you have um, this is possible okay so where the technology is available that is also there there are some company already has come in the market who can convert and they can put the um, the setup into small small sectors So pyrolysis of a, this is conventional pyrolysis of mixed plastic waste. By plastic waste only plasto oil is uh, plasto oil is made. So this is the actual uh, some laboratory setup, and this is a, a bit larger one solar thermal pyrolysis. This is solar thermal pyrolysis of mixed plastic waste. So different type of plastic waste actually. So the main problem of the plastic waste is that it is never pure. There will be multiple number of uh, the plastic will be there. It is not one type of plastic will be um, there. Multiple. So, so, th so this uh, TCD technology has the advantage that it can take a wide range of plastics into consideration. It can be taken together separately for PVC, for uh, uh, polythene. That we don't have to think. So you can take uh, polythene, you can take PVC, any type of such plastic. Except the thermoset, sometimes most of the thermoplastic materials can be taken together and it will undergo pyrolysis or um, plasma pyrolysis. So that is that will give you the plaster oils. So actually, some run is taken and in the bottle, the, the oil is collected and that oil is used into vehicle and found to be um, quite good. Always is not necessary that we will get sufficient number of plastic, but if you're plant is there, you have to have a continuous supply. Okay. So that's why algal biomass um, is also used as a feed. That is uh, algal biomass, it can be weeds, sea weeds, or um, this can be plantation is done and uh, this, that can be used as a feed after uh, that um, processing, some processing is there after drying, it can be used as a feed and that plaster oil can be made out of that. And this research is a very ongoing field. It is also going on into um, uh, biochemistry related in that uh, laboratory people are doing actually. So preparing something after drying, some processing, just like tea leaf we do the processing, here this is also getting processed. Okay, so heating and some processing is done. And after that, this can be used as a uh, feed material and you can get the plaster oil. So as an alternative. From the sea weeds also it can be done. This is a proposed methodology, shedding to small pieces, uh, municipal plastics, so more or less same, so I skip. <coughs> Details are there, so now I want to end up with this last thing that actually what type of research is going on into our uh, BCREC, okay, that maybe you are more interested. So. <coughs> economical processing of raw sand for glass and ceramic industry. So that is one uh, method. <coughs> Just one second. Okay, so first of all, economical processing of raw sand for glass and ceramic industry. So that raw sand is available from different river like Damodar. But this Damodar sand, you cannot directly use in the glass and ceramic industry. They need much pure form of uh, sand. They will need uh, silica, and, but without uh, different type of oxides that is present in the raw sand, like aluminum oxide, iron oxide, it is present. And you need to remove that. Okay, so, uh, that uh, economical some process is required. So, so that the raw sand can be converted to that uh, utilizable form, which is in the industry, in the glass and ceramic industry, they can directly use to make the glass. So if it, it will be a value added product, so that uh, 
thing is going on. So the research is going on. Composting of a biodegradable waste to organic fertilizer. That also is taken up this particular um, project. So from the canteen, so some vegetable peels and every day because so many students are there into the hostel. So from the hostel garbage, dumping of that hostel garbage or that is sending to the municipality, that is actually becoming a headache day by day. And municipality is also uh, liking this type of project. So it can be converted to organic fertilizer, okay, composting by composting method. So that uh, that processing, how can be done? How do you do the scale up? So uh, collection and it's a really a process. Okay, so that is another project. Processing of continuous to biogas and manure. That's another idea. All ideas not started yet, but its ideas are there. So cantinoids can be converted to biogas. Okay, and that biogas can be sent into the canteen itself. But cantinoids is degraded, producing biogas, and that biogas is returned back to the canteen, and that can be used there as a cooking gas. And, and the byproduct that we get can be used as a manure. Then setting up of a fermentation plant for organic acids. So this biodegradable thing can be converted to organic acids also, gas, acid mixer. Instead of gas, it can be converted to acid mixer. This acid mixer can be used for the processing of this raw sand into industry ready sand. Okay, so that acid, then we have, don't have to buy acid. So it will be much more economical. That's another idea. Disposable drinking water bottle, that uh, water bottle that we usually throw it here and there, like uh, your Kinle water bottle. So the polymeric material, uh, that chlorine water can be filled and it can be used like a 40 watt bulb. So where there is no, uh, during daytime obviously, sunlight. So when there is a sunlight exposure into the um, chlorine, so there is a property that chlorine, that it will emit light. So it's some sort of um, that uh, phosphorescent material. So it can collect the sunlight and it can put the light inside the room. Suppose there is a, um, on the rooftop, there are some holes. So it is not actually, um, uh, if you have a corrugated seat on the top of the hut, so there are holes onto that in the remote village area where there is no electricity. So people are actually using. So that's also an important thing, an interesting thing actually. So people can do it. So in the chlorine water, if they are in the water filled bottle, sunlight can be distributed inside the um, households. If it is put complete dark, you can get some light inside. Extraction of food color from the disposed dead flowers. Dead flowers are actually people are disposing. So instead of disposal, food color can be extracted. So into our um, the BCLC garden only, huge flower is there. And uh, usually after one or two days, all the flowers are dead. So these, instead of disposing the flower, we can make the food color out of that, which is actually marketable. So these are some ideas we have and some of the things we already we have started and research is going on. So this is the uh, current research project. So I end up here. If you have question, you can ask me directly. Thank you. Thank you very much for your nice talk. And if anybody have any question, please ask, sir. Hello. Yeah, Devanjan. Yes, Devanjan. So, so e-cars hmm. will be a good alternative to diesel cars, but e-cars require a lot of electricity, and in India electricity is main. The major fraction is made from fossil fuels, and they are in scant quantity. So no. how will get fuel? You can put so you can put solar panel on the top. That is also another idea. You don't have to use uh, conventional electricity. You can use the uh, solar electricity around the vehicle. And in future, just think, in future, you don't get the conventional fuel. Then what we'll do? We have to do something. You cannot stop the civilization. Isn't it? So that's why that is another idea that you can put the solar panel on the roo rooftop of the vehicle. And at least 40% uh, 
save energy you can save by that way okay a very small fraction of the solar energy actually reaches the earth's surface no that's, that's why there is another idea another idea i told you that there are small small motors connected to the wheel directly so they they will consume less energy and that will rotate the wheel and there is a synchronization of in all the wheel there is a ic so that will control the their processing and the all the um, motor that loss of energy will be very mi minimum very minimum that way you can improve the efficiency and at least 30 to 40 percent of the energy directly you can draw from the solar in solar panel the cell will be charging and discharging at the same time so won't that causing you sort of problems uh -huh. that, that, that's why the problems are there but problems are there but new things are also coming up okay so, so fuel cell is also there a lot of alternatives are there a lot of proposals are there people are actually doing and some things are becoming um, interesting and uh, it's quite good also okay so maybe it will, we'll have to wait for some more time so anybody of you you are also upcoming uh, students so you are becoming researcher so maybe you will find out how can it can be done don't uh, tell the problem you can solve the problem any more question from anybody anybody have no. any question no sir Okay, okay, thank if, you. If, if, okay, if there is no questions, we can go to the second uh, part of the yeah. program. Yes, yes, and yes. I'm, requesting, I'm requesting the rest of the speakers not to take more than half an hour time because we like to end the program within 1 p.m. Okay, so keep in mind that part. This is my request to the speakers. Okay, let us start the Thank you, sir. Uh, our next resource person, Dr. Kamalika Tewari, young and dynamic educationalist, is now working as the assistant professor in electronics and instrumentation department of Dr. B. C. Roy Engineering College for last 15 years. She has done her MTech from NIT Durgapur and worked for PhD at Jadavpur University, Kolkata. With a creative mind, she engrossed herself in diversified fields like fabrication of metal oxide nanoparticles, carbon paste, sensor for electronic tongue, sensor array for estimation of food quality, and many others. She has more than 15 research publications to her credit. With the brief introduction, I will ask Dr. Theory to deliver her lecture. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, a very good morning uh, to all my teachers. And uh, uh, am I audible, ma'am? Yes, yes. You are audible. Okay, thank you. Uh, very good morning to my teachers and all my dear students. Uh, thank you to each and everyone who have joined us on this platform. Uh, we are really very pleased, our organization is really very pleased to have you all. Uh, you are such a good academic school, uh, very close to our institution. So dear students, we are really, very really happy to please to have you all in our in, in a platform where we can interact with each other. So uh, let me start with our presentation, with my presentation. Hello, Kamalika madam, I think there is a problem in the connectivity problem, I think. Actually, there is some network problem. Okay, sir, so, so I, I will reconnect. I'll just reconnect. Now, okay. please reconnect because we are not getting it. Is 
is it not visible? Uh, the, it is visible, but your voice is breaking. Okay. Your voice is breaking. Hello students, please fill up the attendance link. Dr. Thierry, your voice is not coming to us and your presentation is also showing blank. And you are muted, I think. You are muted. Actually, she is reconnecting herself. Okay, okay, but if if it kills much more time, then we can go to, the, uh, to give the opportunity to the second speaker, and after that, she will say maybe. Is it Yes, but your uh, sound is not clear. Okay, sir, I'll return it from uh, another handset also. Sir, two minutes. Students are requested not to leave the program. I am seeing that from almost 70, the number has decreased to, to 50. Now it is 48, including us. Now yes. it is 48, including us. Actually, the pro the meeting is in virtual mode, so there is a problem also. The students, you have to understand this one. So just wait for a few minutes. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, it is connected now. Yes, yes. Now it is clear. Uh, you start your uh, lecture. Okay. Yeah. Uh, very good morning, my uh, dear students. Thank you to each and every one of you for being with us over here. Uh, we are our organization is really pleased to have you on the same platform and where we can interact with you all so student, today's topic is all about 21st century skill development and before we get into what is all about skill development let's try to understand why we are talking about skill development why the uh, AICT is talking about skill development. Why National Skill Development Agency is talking about skill de development? So there are uh, this question might have come in your mind. It's very important to understand, student, what is skill development? Students, skill development is a uh, very valuable. Uh, it's just like value addition to your life. We, every one of us, we need to be very much independent. We need to earn our own bread and butter. Even when we were in the schools, we used to think of our career opportunities. So the job opportunities we had five years back is not the same that we are having now. So, in, so there is a complete change or there is a rapid change in the job market. And if you want to survive in this change, rapid change of change of job market, it is very important that you need to develop some skills that are very important for you. That will give you a career advancement. advancement. So there are lessons in the books, but these lessons, they are very important for your knowledge, but these are not skill-based lessons. They're with, they are confined within the classroom students. So. What you need now 
to increase the thinking capability of each of you. You should be able to interact. You should not. It should be very domain specific studies. It's very, very important so that you really survive in the advanced in this advancing world. Now, students, you will say, why, why ma'am, we will go for skill development? At this level, this school level, why we need to go for skill development? Students, am I audible to you all? Yes, no yes ma'am. Hello? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. So, okay. So, student, uh, if you, uh, this is a statistic that we have got from Planning Commission. You can, you know, our country is a home of almost 1.34 billion people. And you, the youth, you are the world's largest youth population who are adding value to the job, who are valuable uh, job seekers. Who are the valuable workforce of our country? In fact, in my have you heard of NEET student? Do you know what is NEET? N W -E, e T. Any students? Any idea? NEET. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm not talking about yes, medical examination. I'm not talking about the medical examination. No. NEET. You know, there is an organization in the world. Uh, it's an international organization who look after the economic corporation, so organization of economic corporation and development, who studies about all the countries about employment, education, and training. It studies about all the countries across the world, and it has said that it has uh, it has pointed out this. OECD, that is Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development in the International Market, has completely striked out that 30% of our Indian youth, I'm talking about my country only, 30% of us, of you, of us, we are not in employment, education, and training. So you can think of such a large number of candidates who are not employed or not employable they have the knowledge you have the knowledge students you have a knowledge a very good knowledge you are very good students but there is something missing missing out that is skill based development and why i'm talking uh, on this aspect is that how you can are ready for go for the industry Right from the school level, I'm talking at the school level. I'm not talking about not talking about the college level. I'm not talking about the university level. I'm talking in your perspective only. See this, this can, can you see this picture? So this is this is the flowchart that has been uh, given by National Skill Development Corporation. By 2020-22, you can see what is the amount of technical gap we are having see the amount of technical people we need in the market the amount of engineers we need in the market there is a gap there is a huge gap if we look into the infrastructure sector the real estate sector we need almost 103 million people 100 million people i'm talking about youth who are the job seekers who are the freshers the job market we need 103 it, this is in our country we need in automobile sector an automobile engineer we need about 35 million engineers automobile engineers in construction civil engineering we need about 33 million engineers skilled person i'm talking about skilled engineers okay i'm not talking on the knowledge itself i'm talking about the knowledge as well as skill manpower in the textile industry we need to have more than 26 million youth force. In the transport, we need almost 17.7. .7. In the food processing, when I say food processing, I'm not talking about the agriculture. I'm talking about post agricultural product. Post, after harvesting what you get and how it is being processed. That means food engineering. Over there also, we need 9.3 million youth. 
and this is a gap this is a shortfall that we are going to face by coming year 2012.7 million we need in the healthcare sector now what you will talk about what is healthcare sector we have various courses in the healthcare sector that that you can you, that you can pursue and you can be a healthcare uh, you can be in the healthcare system we have real estate when i say real estate services i mean to say the mechanical engineers are, are, who are uh, very much responsible for the heavy engineering uh, machineries so the, over there also we are having 4 million uh, manpower we need in the organized retail sector we talk about flipkart we talk about big bazaar we talk about online shopping over there also we are having 17.3 million shortage so, so that's a basically the shortfall we are going to have by 2022 so this is the statistic that has been given by national skill development corporation and they are expecting such a big manpower shortage so you are the people who are going to be in this different phases that are, that we can see on see in the screen so you need you to go for this so the benefit how can you uh, what? How can we talk about uh, students uh, in the 2016? You know, uh, the Skill Development Authority said that we are having 9.94 almost millions. Um, uh, we need target skill manpower. But do you know, students, how many we are having? We are having only 1.96 millions. There are so many pass outs are there every year. Every year, so many students are young minds are uh, coming out of the schools and colleges but hardly 1.96 million are there into the technical field so the how you can uh, the, the, basically the benefit of a growing economy is it is often reflected in the growing number of well paid jobs you are having so how you will say you have got a career advancement when you are well paid so every year students we have a large number of young minds like you who are entering into the workforce. So it is very, very critical to improve the employability of you all. For this reason only, a task has been taken up, that is skill development task. It has been coordinating by all the skill developed efforts have been taken across the country. That various organizations are taking this uh, initiative it's a government initiative to make you skilled. It includes what? Removal of disconnections between the demand and supply of skilled manpower. There are various vocationals and training uh, networks are there, frameworks are there, which will build, which will give you a skill and innovative thinking and ideas, not only for the present jobs that are there in the market, but the jobs that are to be created. Student, the job market is not the same. Five years back, can, do you have do we had any idea of data science? Do you had any idea of machine learning? Students, have you heard of that thing? Have you heard of these things? Students? No, no. Have you heard of data science? Have you heard of uh, machine learning? No, teacher. Have you heard of PCB design? No, no ma'am. No, no. no. But now it has come into effect. Now it has, now you are looking for uh, Python. Now you are looking for various coding languages. Now you are looking for various app development. But five years back, it was not the same. So the scenario has changed. The scenario has changed with the job demand has changed. If the job demand has changed, they are expecting different things from you. So students, so, so what is, so we need to understand. This is the reason why we need to understand what is skill development. So basically skill is the ability to execute a task within some predetermined uh, results must be there and uh, with a time framework that is you should have a deadline so students you should have if you go into the literal meaning of skill and development skill means the ability to, to do something with precision and developing is 
adding something to you, new, new to it. So that means what students, you need to develop yourself with the certain skill sets so that it will add value to the organization. Why the organization is going to take you? Why you are going to be employed? Because you have got the skills. And that is very important for your career development. So there are basically, there are basically two domains in which you need to have knowledge. One domain general and other one is domain specific. And this is very important right from the school curriculum. Now you will think why we are talking about skill development in a school level. So let us understand. Let's take an example, students. When I say, when I say students are domain general, that you students should have a domain general skills as well as domain specific skills. So when I say students, you are going to have these two skills within you, then only you are going to be employed or you can go for a higher education. You need to understand what these terms are literally. See, our education system is very academic centric. Okay. It is very academic centric. Education is one of the basic rights which has been guaranteed by the constitution of our country. But it has to be supplemented with a skill development strategy. Why? The reason is to ensure you employment. Education with skill training only will raise confidence. It will improve the productivity of an organization and it will bring about competency of an individual through certain focused outcome based learning. So we need to learn what are these two domains. Suppose when I'm talking about domain general, what students we are, it is expected. See students, uh, in class you have been given with certain project work. Do you get project work, activity work yes. in your classroom? Yes. You get now? Yes. Ma so tell me what is expected from you? What the teacher expects from you? They want to see your teamwork, how well you are performing, how well you are coordinating with your uh, friends, your classmates. They, and the, most importantly, the work has been given to you is to see whether you have a very good time management. It is also very important, or rather the teachers want you to have a leadership quality in within you. You should be leading the project. When I say leadership quality, I mean to say the leading leading the project the leading the work that has been assigned to you that is only possible if you have a very good teamwork if you have a very good time management skill and you have a self-motivation to do that work but at the same time you had the you need to have the other thing important when the project is assigned to you there is other thing is also very important which is domain specific skill that is skill, knowledge-based, technical skill you need. So this is also, there are two types of skills. One is your soft skill and another is your hard skill. When I am taking over, talking about hard skill, I am talking about that technical skill within you. Okay. It is, basically soft skill is a very sociological term. Okay. So it, this is relating to some a, a person emotional intelligence it just shows how much intelligent you are how well you are uh, how, how well your personality traits are your communication is there ability to uh, coordinate with your uh, your classmates when you are given with an assignment when you are given with a group work when you are given with a project work so this is what a teacher expects from you want to develop within you that is very important and it gives it, it will show the best project work is always depends upon not only the what the output you have got but it also indicates the relationship within you and also the technical knowledge you are having with the assignment okay so for example uh, like many of you students all the 60 students in the class may not have the same uh, interest some may be very good in talking about IT sector. Some may be very good, uh, may be uh, very much interested in electronic design. Some may be very much interested in an embedded system. Some may be interested in healthcare also. You have heard of optometry, medical lab technicians, 
can heard of uh, hospitality manage management. So these are the various skills that needs uh, uh, that needs to be there in a that, that, that a student may think of right from the school level. And these skills are supplementary to each other. Okay, the domain specific skill and the domain general skills are very much supplementary to each other. Along with the qualities, soft skill quality should have a very good technical uh, technical quality. Uh, and you can start it from right from the school level. It is not confined to classroom students. The skill development is not confined to classroom. In classroom, you gain knowledge. But outside the classroom, when you're given with certain projects, works, and all this, this gives you a chance to explore. Explore what? A new topic, a new learn. You're learning or something new. You're developing your skills. And bottom line is that other than these two, there is also a third thing you need, and that is self-preservation. OK, so that is also a very important skills we, we need to have in this COVID situation, that we need to be very, uh, we need to be healthy and mentally strong. Now, how the skill development will going to uh, benefit you, you students? I'm talking about the school going students. So students, at the school level, uh, there must be options for you. You, you are having options. That is, skill development comes and must be provided at the school level. Many courses are there, such as you have hospitality, hospitality, healthcare, IT sector, retail sector, that can be added as per your interest in the school curriculum. You know, the skill development can be started as per the National uh, Skill Development Authority. It can be started at the age of 13 years. Now, how? You, you might the question maybe how? Let's take an example. Suppose any of the student of you might be very much interested in healthcare system. So when I say healthcare system, what comes in your mind, students? Tell me. Tell me, student, what comes in your minds when I uh, when uh, when if anyone is interested in healthcare system in the class? Doctor, doctor nursing, etc. Not hospitality. There are doctor. hospitality. Yes, there, there are exactly students. There are other domains also, but that that you can start from right from the school. That skill you can develop in the school level also. Okay, suppose you so anybody want to be uh, into the pathology technician or lab technician, medical lab technicians are there. So what you can learn. In the school level only, you can go for, you can learn how to collect blood. You can go for a skill development in the blood collection specialist. Specialist. So that is a skill development. And later, you can pursue further to become a full-fledged pathologist, technician, or the other term is medical lab technician. Similarly, for optimetry, there is a course on optimetry, which will help you to be, uh, you can work with the optimetry means you can go for the, uh, 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 it's related something uh, uh, to the eye hospitals. So this is, uh, these are the courses as well. And the same thing in the technical domain. Let's talk about the technical domain. Suppose if a student uh, want to pursue uh, automobile engineering, many of you might want to be an automobile engineering in the future. Now, how, what kind of skills you can have right from the school level? What you can do, you can opt for motor repair. Motor repair is a very uh, certificate, uh, certification is uh, skill training development is there, which you can do it at the school level. And you can later on pursue a diploma, a degree. Okay, at the school level, you can learn motor repair skill development training. And later on, you can go for after class 10, you may, you may go for polytechnic diploma. And then you can certainly pursue for engineering, BTEC in automobile engineering. Students, many of you are very much interested, I think, uh, in coding language. Are you interested in coding language? 
Yes, ma'am. Video is going for developing code, app development, coding language. So, students, what you can do, you can learn this language, coding language, at the very school level itself. Python is a very well accepted course. So, these are the things you can learn at the school levels. And what we can do, uh, what you can opt for after plus after 10, you can suddenly go for diploma in computer science. You can also go for BCA, you can also for go for and then it, for higher studies, you can go for degree in computer science. Now tell me now your question might be, ma'am, as I can, why we need to study uh, coding language in the schools, and then uh, we can go for uh, engineering courses. No, it's not mandatory, but it is preferred. Why? We want you want job. When the industry comes for placement, any software industry comes for the placement, if the person sees this person is well skilled with the coding language, who will get the job? A person with only computer science degree in data science or a person who is having a coding language skill developed and a degree in engineering certainly the person with the skill in uh, skill uh, like, uh, knowledge in within him so that's the reason why we need to introduce this type of courses in the very school curriculum so that we get very domain specific we get our knowledge we, we get our knowledge in there we get education in the system in from the schools but this domain specific knowledge will help you to get into what will be directly employed by the by the um, industry so domain uh, knowledge and skill development goes in hand how many students are interested in photovoltaic uh, cell solar cell photovoltaic batteries students are you interested in this yeah yeah so you can certainly the school level you can certainly go for photovoltaic battery selection calculation this thing you can learn in the very school level and later on you may go for designing of this uh, solar panels and all and then you can opt for your pc and electrical engineering courses okay so, so the pedagogy should be focused on learning by practical means. You are gaining the knowledge at the school level within the classroom, but it has to be enhanced through what? Through e-learning, through industry-driven project. So this skill de development ideally begins at the age of 13 years. That means at the very school level, you can start it off. You can integrate with this skill development education, which is very essential for improving your skills within you. So depending upon your interest, I'm not talking about all the 60 students who are talking. Some may go for hospitality, some may go for uh, for photovoltaic cell, uh, photovoltaic uh, the image of the solar. Some may go for coding language, which are very much uh, which will be very helpful if you go for further studies in diploma in computer science or if you if you go for a degree in computer science there you know there are courses that have come up in computer science with machine learning and data science that computer science and design which will give you a hand-on experience a knowledge a skill knowledge along with this technical knowledge will help you to get a well established job you're going to get a very uh, good career advancement and this is uh, impart, it has to be imparted in every school uh, within the academics. So school at higher level, and this is what the school uh, skills at the school level that you can. This is the knowledge that you can gain at the school uh, school level. Okay, that means uh, to make uh, uh, India the skill capital or uh, the school curriculum need to have a dynamic change. That is, along with your curriculum, whatever you are studying in your class, you should you should have the skill uh, knowledge certification you should have so for a better career advancement okay uh, in higher education knowledge is important skill is very important for diverse employment needs okay 
So it is in this scenario, it is in this attempt that uh, the skill development has been uh, taken up. Skill development has been taken up across all the universities in this school, national development cooperation, uh, their uh, identification of the sectors and job roles are there. Train, uh, trainings are very important. Uh, training of the trainers are very important. Okay. So it is in this respect, uh, there are certain preferred courses you can have uh, right from the school level. Those are electrical based systems, you can have electronics based system, the PCB designing. This PCB design is very, very important. If you ha can have a hand on experience on PCB design, you can easily design any uh, any uh, instrument, you can design any electronic gadget with you all. Mechanical engineering, some may be in, in very much interested into manufacturing sector. So what we can do, what you can do students, you can go for a welding, a uh, very important welding, you can learn welding, that's also skill development. Uh, coding, as I said, which is for information, say, uh, information technology or automobile, you have got textile and handloom apples are there, office work. When I say office work, uh, what I mean to say is business administration I'm talking about, healthcare and healthcare is there, nutrition is there, hospitality sector is there, business related works are there. So there are various uh, skill development uh, uh, options are there at the very school level. So these are the various skill development uh, sectors where you can develop yourself student, right from the school level, right from class eight, you can get into this uh, skill level a certification course, which will bring you a uh, help you in the higher education, the colleges and uh, certainly it will give you, give you a very good job. Now, your question is, what type of skills should we have in the 21st century? What will the job market is demanding from you? Students, the job market is demanding some learning skills, literacy skills and life skills. These are the three L's you need to have within you, other than your book knowledge, other than the, the, that is being taught in your class. So these are very important students. Now, what are basically these uh, learning skills? Learning skills are basically the critical thinking you should have. You should be able to be very creative. So student, whatever classroom uh, you get the projects, assignments, the uh, test, uh, creative test they are being given to you. You might be having some uh, tech test. You take participating in this kind of test. Why? Because it will give you a creativity. It will give, bring about the creativity within you. It will give, help you in critical, critical thinking within you. It will help you to collaborate with the uh, other organization. You will collaborate with different technical institutes. Why? Because they will give you the infrastructure where you can put down your ideas and you can form those instruments, you can form those, uh, you can design something, you can go for coding. Uh, so these are all learning skills that you will develop within you and this will help you a lot in this century. Next is your literacy skills. Literacy skills is what? Literacy skill is your information literacy is very, very important now. Students, it is the foundation skill. So we are we have all left down the chalk and dust students. Now we have come down with the laptops and we have come down with the Wi-Fi. So the information literacy, information technology is very, very of now the foundation skill we are all having. So we need to understand the various data science, we need to understand the data points and how to encounter them in them in online. Okay, so there are other things are also that is media literacy, it is that what is media literacy? It is basically the practice of identifying and publishing methods. Whatever you have developed, you should be able to publish it and the source it and distinguish it between the ones that are in, that are credible, that will give credit, that will bring credit to you all. Okay, technology uh, is a very important uh, uh, another step forward to teach you students about the machines that are involved in the information page. Okay, that is very very important. Technology literacy will give the students the basic in information uh, that we need to understand about what? About the gadgets that you are using. The gadgets that you, you, you are having in hand, the modem you are having, the, uh, the, the various mobile handsets that you are having. So this technology literacy will give you students the basic uh, understanding the, of how these gadgets are working and how you can perform your tasks with this. So 
uh, then only if you have this kind of uh, technical knowledge within you, then uh, and along with the learning skills, then only you will be able to go for the life skills. That is, you should have a leadership quality. It will bring an initiative within you to do something productive and be a social. It is out of this way, students, that our uh, uh, that the concept of ideal lab generated. And you know about uh, we have so many colleges across the country. Uh, we are really pleased. Uh, we are happy to uh, say that uh, we are proud to say that our institution got uh, this uh, AICT Idea uh, Lab this year, selected for AICT Idea Lab. You know why? Uh, uh, only 49 colleges uh, across the country got this uh, chance to uh, get, uh, get get this um, get get, uh, get this startup program, and we are the one of them. So what is this idea lab? Means how it is going to relate with you? How you are going to get an effective, uh, in a effective interaction with the idea lab of our college? How, how it is going to help you, student? So this is basically a startup policy that uh, startup policy uh, that India have started in our country it has been started. Why? It is intended to bring about a good, robust ecosystem for nurturing innovation, and it will start up large scale employment opportunities. Uh, the most important is this: if, 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 how the, you are going to get benefit with uh, with this action plan. If if you have got some project ideas, you will be able to get it done in these lab. Okay, there are certification. As I mentioned, you there, there are certification courses right from the school level. So you can what you can go, you can. You can learn about these courses. For example, some students may be very much interested in uh, designing, in fabrication. You can go for uh, PCB designing. So there are electronics and electrical fabrication because PCB designing. So this will enhance your skill within you if you have an interest in it. Some students may be very much interested in embedded system design. Or embedded program. So the department under the AICT Idea Lab, there is a department of electronics communication and electrical, they will help you in getting certification course on, on this. Some may be very much in, interesting in lathe machining. If you are into manufacturing industry or uh, want to get into manufacturing industry student, you need to know you need to know about the lathe machining, you need to know about the welding. So this type of courses can be there with Department of Mechanical Engineering and, it, and you know students this certificate just a minute. this courses are there so 3D printing 3D printing is a very innovative uh, idea 3D printing this training on 3D printing you can have in the AICT idea lab where you can where you can uh, where you can understand uh, 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 idea 3d printing is there where you can uh, get a hand on experience on uh, idea lab in this idea lab and the certificate that you are going to get from this uh, uh, this idea lab you are, it is approved across the country it is approved across the country students okay so this is very very important next is robotics you can if you want to if you have a keen interest in robotics this thing also, you can uh, gain knowledge, you can have a certification course, you can uh, uh, learn about these things. Some may be very much interesting in IoT, machine learning, artificial intelligence. So there are also uh, these, things, uh, this is, these things are supported by computer science department. And this, if you have any idea, if you have any idea, if you want to learn something, if you want to gain some knowledge, and if you have your ideas or project development is there, you can come to this lab and you can do your work. You have the facilities under one roof. And this is IDIA AICT lab in the college. So this is very important, students. And how it is going to benefit you all? Students, there are other programs also which will benefit you. These courses you can learn from class 10 onwards. OK, class 10 onwards, that office automation, uh, uh, if you want to get into BPO sector, you have uh, you you can go for uh, computer application studies. But what is the job roles that you are associated with BPO? You can go for a sales executive. You can go for accountant. 
uh, if you go for assistant store manager, for that, you know, uh, there is a new course that is supply chain management is there. Information technology is there where you can go uh, work, uh, uh, work as a project manager, IT consultant, training faculty, system specialist. So these are the various courses that you can learn right from the class 10. It's a within class 10 school curriculum. You can start up, you can go for yoga, uh, you can go for a good, you can be a very good trainer. So this is the skill development that are there, uh, which you can learn in the school level. And that is going to benefit you in the near future. Now, student, uh, I like to uh, uh, give you a small idea, a small application, a small research area. We'll talk about uh, students. How many sense organs do you have, students? Anandi, Anayana, Pagan. Yes, five five sense organs. Five right. sense organs. That means what? These are the senses that you are having within your body can we say that these are the senses we are having in our body yes ma'am yes so uh student uh, today we are going to talk about uh i'll give you a brief about uh how the artificial sensor senses that have come in this 21st century and how it is impacting uh, uh the industry now see machine perception is a term which is basically it means artificial sense uh, 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 machine perception is a uh, concept about artificial sensors so it is a technology it is a technology uh, that can stimulate the ways that human perceive the world around you so that you have a, uh, a, a you have a nose you have a tongue you have an eye uh, uh, that stimulate the sense of sight smell and taste but what if if it is artificially done have you heard of it students have you heard of this concept? Artificial yes. senses? Yes. Yes. Very good. So, you, uh, so have you any idea about electronic nose, electronic tongue, e vision? Any idea? Shilabi? Ankit? No, no. We are heard of no, with VR glasses. Pardon? virtual reality gla glasses that make us see things which are not there no 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 sir. this concept is a bit different this concept is a bit different so you artificial when i say see, when i say human perception there are two perceptions they are there one is human perception and another is machine perception see when the sensors are within our body it will help us to stimulate the sense of light smell and taste but when, how we can do it using technology? How we can do it with uh, electronic gadgets, electronic things? That how we can have fabricate sensors? We can even fabricate sensors for taste, smell, and vision. So these are basically when we mimic, uh, when we are mimicking the mammalian olfactory system, we say it to be an electronic nose. It can smell the various odor. What is the function of your nose? You're basically smelling. Your, your system, olfactory system, is basically smelling the uh, various uh, uh, volatile organic compounds that are in and around within. Same thing can be done. Same thing can be done. We have a human gustatory system. What this is this system does? taste you have got taste buds in your tongue so we can even mimic this human industrial system we can go for artificial sensing of taste how we can do it we can do it by electronic tongue next is visual system you have got a visual system you have got your two eyes and we can have a mimic of this visual system also the technological advancement has gone in it, it, it is going for uh, mainly for artificial sensors where you have got e nose, e tongue, and e vision. Now, what is basically electronic nose? If we if we if we, if we, if we go for our uh, human body, you will find that student. We have the odor, some odor. You have got a perfume in around 
who have got uh, some uh, rotten food items or you're going by your uh, Swiss system, you have a strong smell. How you know that? You know it, you come to know by the smell on the uh, that you get from your nose. So the that those is basically that you have got olfactory receptors are there in your nose and olfactory bulbs are there. These signals are then, uh, uh, been, uh, these biological signals have been transmitted olfactory bulb and then it is given to the brain where the brain uh, take the decision or uh, they take the, uh, uh, give you the reflection of what kind of smell you are taking. This is what I'm asking. Madam, we have to wind up now. Time is 45 minutes. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can I have uh, three, four minutes more, sir? Okay, maximum. Okay, madam. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is how the same, yes. So same thing we can have for the electronic nose. Were, in place of olfactory receptors, you can develop, students, a sensor array. And then you have a sensor si signal transducer uh, due to shortage of time, I won't be able to explain you what is basically a transducer and how the pattern recognition is taking place. Let me get into, uh, as I've got five minutes time only, I'll show you a work that has been done by a student of our, our lab. Uh, uh, this is basically, when I say, in a, uh, this, when I say sensor array, that means uh, uh, these are responsible for detecting the various odors. Okay, these are basically smell sensors that are there. So in our uh, college, the students came up of, of idea of sensing a gas uh, and developing a sensor. How they have done it? They have done by fabrication or synthesis of uh, nanostructured uh, zinc oxide. Nanostructure, nanoparticles they have synthesized in the lab uh, in our in our college and zinc oxide, and it have, they have used it for gas sensing application. Okay, students. Now I'll show you. Show you I just uh, I'll just brief you because of shortage of time. So what they have done, they have uh, developed, they have synthesized zinc oxide nanoparticles. Over here, you can see what the, the how they have synthesized the process of fabricating uh, zinc oxide is through uh, how they have done by chemical bath uh, deposition technique. This is a te uh, technique of uh, technique in by which you can go for synthesis of nanoparticles. It's very simple and very cost effective. Uh, over here, you have taken zinc nitrate and uh, uh, 40 ml of zinc nitrate is taken in a solution and you have ammonium oxide that has been added to it. It is almost heated to about 75 degrees Celsius for one hour and then you get a precipitate. Uh, precipitate uh, is formed. That's basically a white powder type uh, precipitate is formed and this is basically the zinc oxide. Now if you look at uh, if you look at this, uh, can you see the flakes, uh, flower like flakes you can see? Students can no you see this flakes? Uh, this no this is basically zinc oxide. Hello? No, no. Well, I think you have not presented it. Okay, okay, okay. Is it visible now, student? No, teacher. No. no. Yes, now yes, it's, no, visible. it's visible now. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Now? Yes, yes now okay. so I'll, I'll show you the set. This is few of my students. Uh, they have developed, they have came up with an idea of... Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, th and this is a uh, few of my students they came up with the idea of uh, developing a gas sensor so what they have done they have fabricated a nano particle students you can do it in your uh, school also the school levels also you can do it you will uh, you will learn uh, in your chemistry lab you can certainly go for synthesis of nanoparticles uh, uh, just because of shortage of time won't be able to give you um, in details uh, the synthesis of zinc oxide nanoparticles, how they have done, they have uh, used the chemical bath deposition technique. Uh, they have taken silver, uh, zinc nitrate and uh, ammonium oxide 
and they have seen you can see the flakes you can see that flower flakes nano flowers you can, can see over here can you see the students yes ma'am you can see it now so see students uh, this dragon it is uh, it is very well observed is clearly observed on the scene there is scanning electron microscope you can see this kind of structure have been formed but after synthesis of zinc uh, zinc uh, oxide uh, nanoparticles in the powder form if you put it in the same uh, under same study you will find scanning electron microscope you will find this kind of structure is there and what they have done they have uh, formed the pellet pellets of uh, this uh, zinc oxide and uh, they have taken this setup they have taken this setup here yeah, this is a gas chamber we have they have considered two gases one is your acetone and another one is your formaldehyde so once they have checked this they have formed a sensor with this uh, pellet form of zinc oxide nanoparticles and they form a pellet form chamber in which one once they have added formaldehyde another they have added acetone and they have trioxide sensor they have developed so this is the uh, this this is the setup where they have, where they have worked. This is the synthesis uh, they have uh, they have got. And uh, students they have found that uh, formaldehyde the sensitivity is uh, uh, for my student was that they could synthesize this sensor and they could detect both acetone and formal do uh, practically you can have an experience of this so there is skill development you can go first various sensor fabrication you can do various uh, gas sensors you can you can learn of uh, uh, learn various uh, fabrication of various sensors uh, in the um, in the in, uh, in the right from the school level in the uh, in the idea lab also you can come up with the projects where you can develop the sensors and you can use in a particular domain for some order uh, for from food application for order application sensing order mm -hmm. some uh, uh, sweets made of perfume this can be done okay so uh, i think i'm in shortage of time uh, electronic tongue is also there so this is the setup for the electronic tongue that we develop in uh, that was developed and this is source file from the, uh, the, the lab from the other university you can see this is uh, electronic tongue is basically for liquid analysis student we have a working electrode so you have studied in your class there is working electrode you have a reference electrode and you have counter electrode so giving potential across working electrode and reference electrode and collecting the transient response from the reference electrode and uh, uh, reference electrode and the counter electrode you can study the various profile of a liquid sample without going for any uh, separation method of each and every chemical compounds that are present in the uh, liquid sample so this is uh, basically done for identification and, and assessment of uh, quality of a sample particularly in the food industry this e tongue and e nose they have fruitfully they, they have uh, got a bigger platform in this uh, agro based industry in the food uh, analysis uh, food analysis and the biggest part is e tongue in tea industry had marked a very uh, mark it has got a fingerprint i can say in the in tea industry so uh, this is uh, this is all i have uh, other small topic that i discussed with you so okay students do you have any questions from your students thank you ma'am uh -huh. for your nice lecture and student if you have any question you may ask ma'am uh, anybody have any question I, I, I think there is a huge shortage of time so okay okay so we huh. So the, I'm 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 requesting the students to um, please stay put and send message to your friends to join because the last speaker is a very eminent speaker and he's basically an innovator, uh, Dr. Obijit Banerjee, and a very good laboratory is run by his supervision and he has a lot of expertise in in, in different fields. So he will deliver his lecture now. Please stay put and send.
send the message to your friends and um, other students to join, please. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, our last speaker in the webinar, Dr. Obhijit Banerjee, is the supervisor and mentor of Texas Instrument and Innovation Lab at PC Roy Engineering College. He is the assistant professor of the electronics and communication engineering department of the college. He obtained his MTech degree from Institute of Radio Physics of Calcutta University and successfully completed his PhD degree from NIT Durgapur. With profound interest towards modern development in his field, he is an expert in artificial intelligence machine learning and intelligent manufacturing. I really hope you will enjoy his lecture on skill development. So now, sir, please over to you, sir. Yes. Good afternoon, boys and girls. Uh, I'm not a good speaker, irrespective of what sir said. I'm not a good speaker. I'm not a good public speaker. And I've never ever delivered to class nine students so please do bear with me see you have been uh, told about this uh, manufacturing techniques things that can be done in the lab uh, stuff that can be manufactured stuff that can be innovated but the question arises why and how the basic thing is uh, why why do we need to do it because we are lagging behind as a nation we are lagging behind around 10 to 15 years in the sector of manufacturing. Once we start this manufacturing from our very core, from the very essence, that is from the school level, then and only then we can prosper. The geopolitical uh, scenario is changing. We need to go ahead. You are the flag bearers of it. The students of the school level as well as the college level. So my talk is on what is uh, skill development in the industrial sector and how you can contribute. So first and foremost is what is a product? And why do you need a product? You have been using products every single day, every single moment. But how is it made? And how is it manufactured? And how is it sold to you? That doesn't really seem much of an importance to a real day consumer. So I'll go start by, I'll start by saying a uh, life cycle of a product. So first thing is a problem is first defined. A problem is defined, a design is made around it. Then we develop the solution, then we deploy it. Now, this was the age old technique of manufacturing. What happened is, Industry 1.0. Industry 1.0 talks about mechanization and introduction of steam power. That was a way, way long, long back. Then came Industry 2.0, which talked about mass production. Mass production using electricity. Then came Industry 3.0, which is right now, where we are using automated robots, machines, which do the job of machining as well as manufacturing. Machining is a term which is also used in terms of manuf uh, manufacturing. But we are looking forward as a nation is industry 4.0. Industry 4.0 requires a lot of skills which do not adhere to the syllabus or things that are being taught in our schools or in, in fact in universities. Industry 4.0 talks about STEM, STEM subjects. STEM subjects are AI, machine learning, automation, IOTs, etc. In that etc. part, there are a hell of a lot of things which I'm not uh, going to talk now. So we are talking about or we are looking forward to industry 4.0 in which we are looking forward uh, for our students, specifically for uh, school students to come forward and contribute because without them, we will be lagging behind, in fact, for another 20 to 30 years. So let's not go into that. One of the things that Industry 4.0 talks about is 
additive manufacturing techniques or techniques of manufacturing which is contemporary in a real life. There are two types of manufacturing techniques. One of them is called as subtractive, another one is called as additive. Now, in the subtractive manufacturing techniques, we take out material from an already solid material to create a new one. Example, the simple lathe machine is being carved out, is uh, curving out a pinion wheel. It may be a screw, it may be something else. But what we are essentially doing is we are subtracting materials from an already existing one. The very problem with this technique, it is a very well known uh, technique, but the very problem is we are losing material in the process. The excess material can be used or recycled, but that doesn't make any sense because only 30 to 40 percent is, can be recycled. The rest is uh, waste. So there is another way of manufacturing that is without extracting, we can add material as much as we want. Non, not a single drop more, not a single drop less. Example is 3D printing. A 3D printing is an additive manufacturing technique in which we deposit materials as and when required. When required, we add that particular material to a particular location to create a 3D object. There is another manufacturing technique which is very, very widely used. In fact, every single plastic component or stuff that you see in your real life is made out of this. This type of machining is called as injection molding, where there is a die. Die, uh, in simple words, is a mold in which you put a plastic, a molten plastic, and when this molten plastic solidifies, you get your stuff. For example, on the right, we can see there is a mold of a remote control box. When this will be filled with molten plastic and it solidifies, you get the cases of the cabinet of the box. But this type of technique is very widely used. Why? Because of speed. The ratio in which we turn a manufactured product from design to deployment, the time in between is very, very your crucial. If we can reduce the time from manufacturing to deployment, we actually get a lot of money out of it. Money is all. So in this type of uh, technique, what we do is, for example, to create a cup, two independent segments of molds are joined together and then molten plastic is injected into that mold. That's the reason it is known as injection molding. Now, this technique is very widely used. In fact, every single thing, your chairs, your plastic chairs, your cabinets, all are made with injection molding. But still, there are times when we need other manufacturing techniques, such as a 3D printer. Why? There are stuff, there are objects which cannot be manufactured using either the subtractive manufacturing technique or the uh, injection molding technique. There comes this type of technique called as 3D printing, where we put every single drop of molten plastic or any other material step by step in a layer to create our desired product. Now, how is it done? This 3D printing is a very intricate process, but it can be explained very simply as we take an object here, which is a CAD model. CAD means a 3D model, electronic model. Then we slice the model in very fine layers. Then what we do is we place the molten plastic in layers one by one on top of another to create a 3D model. You can take it as an example. For example, you can cut many, many pieces of paper in a particular shape to create and then uh, stack them up to create a 3D model. 
Now, where is it useful? And why is it being used in modern day? And why you need to learn about this? Because simply this type of manufacturing technique is also known as a rapid manufacturing or prototyping technique. Before going to the market, if you want to uh, simplify the process of verification, whether your model works, then you need to understand the mechanism of your design. Then you can create a 3D model using a 3D printer, test it out, and once it's done, then you can go for a proper production mechanism like your injection molding. What are the materials that, that is used for 3D printing SAR? It can be used for metal 3D printing. It can print in aluminum, copper, titanium, obviously pricey. Then there are plastics or polymers. Among the polymers, ABS is the most common one. Now, ABS is the one which is used in your daily life. Every single day you use it. Your PVC pipes are all made of ABS. What we do in our labs, we generally do not use ABS because ABS is smelly. It is toxic. So what we use is PLA. PLA is polylactic acid. Now PLA is somehow biodegradable. So we use that. Others are sands, ceramics. Ceramics are mainly used for uh, potteries and stuff. Not usually used for industry. Somehow it is used for non-conductive surfaces. Uh, what we use in our lab is of PLA. Why 3D printing is so important nowadays and why people are actually using it. In fact, I'll uh, tell you this. BMW, Ferrari, and the recent one. Uh, what was that again? BMW, Ferrari, and some other. Tesla, yeah. They are manufacturing their engines with parts which are 3D printed. Why is it cost effective? Absolutely not. It is not cost effective as of now. But what if one of your parts has to be manufactured in China, I, it has to be manufactured in bulk, and you give an order, and that order reaches you some six months later. So your entire production cycle is halted. To eradicate that problem, we can manufacture the, those small parts in-house, on the spot, inside the plant. There comes 3D printing. It does not use injection molding. So you uh, need not to use any sort of uh, molds or dyes. Then comes, you can manufacture many, many uh, objects in a single go. I mean. You can manufacture uh, multiple objects at the same time. It is also one of the important feature. Another feature is on the left hand side, you see a small spirule or a, a screw type thing, which is very, very small. It can even manufacture that. On the right hand side, it's a ventricle system. It can also manufacture that. So size is irrespective of the manufacturing technique. You can use it to manufacture n number of sizes, which is not a case for subtractive manufacturing techniques. Another feature of 3D printing is these are the objects which can never ever be manufactured using a subtractive manufacturing technique. Subtractive manufacturing technique accounts for your CNC's, your lathes, Take those are geometric shaped. What about non geometric shapes? Then comes your 3D printing. And moreover, nowadays all turbo jet engines have non geometric shapes, non geometric uh, fans. Those can only be printed using a 3D printer and none other. So there comes 3D printer and the need to learn why 3D printing is essential and why you need to learn this 3D printing. And it's not so uh, costly either. Nowadays, it is very 
the first 3d printer type is called as a fdm 3d printer now in fdm 3d printer exactly in fdm 3d printer what we do is we take a molten plastic in in terms of filament a wire of molten plastic is pushed through a nozzle and it pours on a surface layer by layer now one might ask what if the nozzle diameter is large enough can we 3d print a house yes you can if the nozzle diameter is large enough and the material is cement then you can manufacture an entire house itself the other manufacturing technique i mean other manufacturing type for 3d printing is called as an sla or stereo lithography stereo lithography talks uh, about polymer with laser this is pricey i'm just showing you the picture you need not know about this in detail what you need to know is the fdm one which is the fused deposition modeling type because that is easy to buy in fact you can buy it for your home uh, some 15000 16000 rupees a piece your school can buy it we have five of them in our colleges uh, so you can actually use them then comes for rapid prototype in this selective laser sintering which uses again laser but for metal printing used in aerospace engineering very very pricey then comes uh, another called as powder uh, powder jetting which is also very uh, your pricey so we need to concentrate on the fdm part there are n number of manufacturing machines or 3d printers in the market on the left hand side you are looking at something which is in the range of a million dollars on the right hand side you get this at a price of around 15k that is 15000 rupees and it is perfectly suited for your home and it can print stuff for your home for your own interest for your own hobbies and to upgrade your skills for what for the next generation of industry 4.0 where every single household should manufacture something of their own in the real time where does industry fit in how does industry use this 3d printing technology the use is for on the left hand side you are looking at a car seat for babies completely 3d printed on the right hand side is a tire which is also 3d printed and then on the bottom yes you are looking at a gun which is also 3d printed illegal but done then the jewelry industry jewelry is done mostly by hand but if you use the technology of sla that is stereo lithography you can make the small scale jewelry at home it can turn out to be a business or it can turn out to be in then the asi archaeological society of india uses they take a 3d model of all of, of an existing platform for example a statue which is decaying for example something a statue near um, agra which is breaking off they will take a 3d scan of that create a 3d model then do a 3d replica of that using 3d printing use that instead of the original statue and uh, statue and preserve the old one here comes the most important part where 3d printing is revolutionizing which is in prosthetics in prosthetics we have a number of bones probably 206 i guess I, i have less so if one of them breaks the only process by which they can be mended is using a tungsten or a carbide or some other material to join them up until now that was the only process but now we have 3d printing in our hand and what we can do is we can create those bones 
we talked about another material called the ceramics we can create the same thing using ceramics which ceramics closely resembles uh, uh, calcium bones and then these bones are then used as a replacement for prosthetics this is an example how a 3d printer is used in terms of manufacturing prosthetic arms for babies as well as adults and these are less pricey it's around 15000 16000 rupees you can actually manufacture them it can benefit the society and as a student if you learn about 3d printing you can contribute to the society by making objects by making or manufacturing products which benefits the society that is what our government is looking forward to from students Indian Army has been using 3D printing recently. They have created this 9mm automatic pistol. It is a clone of Zitara Mac 9 or Mac Trevor 9. The entire black region that is the butt socket and the rear butt is created using 3D printing. So, in fact, our army is also using 3d printing in the process this entire house has been created using 3d printing as i was saying if the nozzle diameter is more and if you use concrete in the 3d printing material you can create a house it's a prototype of a small mechanism which is created using 3d printing then there is a 3D printing earplugs, which is created using small polymer products, which is malleable as well as ductile. That is, if it goes into your ears, it can take the shape of the inner kernels. Now comes the other part. How does 3D printer is useful in a school or an environment such as a college example from product i mean design to production in one of our projects we were creating an hexapod and hexapod is a uh, robot which works on six legs and one of the legs is this so this leg has a femur a coxa and a tibia this had to be first created using a AutoCAD or a CAD system that AutoCAD model had to be created first. This was the AutoCAD model that was created in the beginning. And if you notice, we have a shield plating on the left hand side. This entire thing had to be printed using a 3D printer because we had no other manufacturing techniques. So this 3D printer was used to create this shield how was it being created we first created a 3d model of it then we exported it into a slicer and in the slicer segment in the slicer segment we created this 3d model now we will be slicing it up into independent slices that is layers this model will be cut into simple layers so if i click on slice what i get is independent slices now if i go from the very bottom end i see the first layer this is my first layer that will be printed and then gradually if i move up i'm printing every single layer one by one now you might be saying or asking me how on earth this gap from the plate to the top of the model is being created to do that we create to do that we create a lot of support materials those support materials are being created now
So once this entire layers are being created, you get this entire model done. Now somebody was uh, talking about uh, how do we get all the energy to run or drive an electric vehicle. One of them is storing energy in its fullest. And one of the way of storing energy properly is using certain amount of materials which can store energy. For example, lithium ion batteries are being used nowadays. So lithium and ion is a composite material that is being used to store your energy. In the 3D printing business also, or in the 3D printing also, there are certain type of materials which can be used to create batteries using 3D printers. It can start from the smaller up and it can scale up to a larger level. So for electric vehicles, either you can uh, go for uh, increased production of energy, which is in continuous research, or you can actually store energy properly. To store energy properly, you will have to have some amount of batteries which can store energy properly. Otherwise, you will have to have 3D, your 3D printers to print them those batteries out. It is a possibility nowadays. Now, another skill uh, development uh, segment that is being used right now is AI and machine learning. I'll go with a short or brief with that. In AI or machine learning, you have been using AI every single day, machine learning every single day. And probably you are not acquainted with how it is working or why is it operating like this, but you are enjoying it every single day. Example, your cell phones. If you ask your cell phones, Google or Siri, who is the prime minister of India, you might get a proper answer, Modi. But if you ask the next question as how old is he you will get an answer of 63 or 69 but you never asked how old is Modi you asked how old is he then how did the system your cell phone understood that you were talking about your prime minister there comes AI machine learning it is learning from the context machine is a learning process machine while it is learning produces a lot of semantics which can be used to create a logical sense of every possible opportunities example of another machine learning segment where uh, students like you can excel in near future now it might sound a very intriguing thing it might sound a very uh, interesting thing but it is not so it is tough, but if you go into this, it's probably good enough. Now it's time for COVID and all. For that, people had to identify whether a particular chest X-ray is of a COVID patient or a normal one or of a viral pneumonia. If you ask by requesting or providing this images to say five doctors to identify which one is of covid patient and which one is not out of five probably four of them will have different opinions there comes your machine learning which reads all these images one after the another and tries to learn the interim pattern in the images. Once it has learned enough, it can identify which one is which, which one is uh, pneumonia, which one is a normal, and which one is COVID. Example, after learning the process, it has learned to see the images in this format, an average format which is very 
nonsense to a normal human eye, but it has got a lot of sense to a machine perspective. Now, once it has learned, it has learned in the next step that the left hand side of the lungs are not the regions that is to be uh, taken into interest for because these regions, the red ones, are not the most in your interesting part. So it is identified which are the parts that it has to look for, the blue ones. After that, this is the entire model. And after that, it has learned to identify it's a huge code. After that, it has identified a proper pneumonia patient. A doctor might look into a chest x-ray and say that uh, that particular patient has COVID. It is then verified using a machine learning model. Why? Because in medical field, experts vary in their opinion. So in machine learning is hugely used in medical field. One can use it in entire uh, medical field. As your Alzheimer's, uh, then uh, necro palsy. These are the uh, terms used in medical science, uh, which are seldom, you know, have a unanimous opinion for. Doctors have separate separate opinions on, on each of them. You ask four of them, three of them will say something else. There comes machine learning. So machine learning is a field where you as a student can excel. AI is a field where you as a student can excel. AI, machine learning are separate, but people talk of them in a single sense. Then comes manufacturing. For example, as we have been talking of uh, 3D printers, there you can excel. What I mean by excel is you can have some skills for, you can acquire those skills for, then is IoT and stuff. But these three things I will specify for students of class 9, 10 to 12 to put your focus on while, uh, while you are in the process of getting your degrees and all. While you are being a student, try to understand that the world is changing. No one cares about how much you get in your schools, your colleges in terms of marks. No one. The, all that matters is marks. I mean, your skills. Your skills are the most Im important things right now because it all matters. So get your skills. And the three skills that I'm, I have said right now are the ones which will drive the entire nation for the, uh, for the next 20 years. AI, ML, and manufacturing or additive manufacturing. So these three skills, I believe students who are not acquainted with can have some uh, time to research on and how do you research on uh, see i always uh, talk to my students or say to my students that an engineer is not the one who knows everything he or she is the one who can hunt for resources that goes for every single student aapko sab kuch malum hoga ye sambhav nahi hai but aapko janna ye zaruri hai ki kahan pe cheeze milne wale hai kahan pe jaan khadi jo hai wo milne wale hai information is money information is everything so if you get that straight and your fundamental straight then you can have that skills in less amount of time and once you get those skills ai ml and manufacturing any of them in less amount of time you will find yourself worthwhile to the industry which industry industry 4.0 now 4.0 is a new term which is being used or flaunted. We are still in industry 3.0, but government of India wants you to be a part of industry 4.0. That is a future plan of government of India. And uh, they are setting up labs in colleges in our 
college too, we are going to set up an idea lab. So you are all in, invited uh, to contribute and use that lab. We have, also have other labs. I have my own lab, but still, it's a big lab. I think that's all. That's all from me. Questions, if any. Thank you very much, sir, for your nice presentation. And students, if you have any question, please uh, ask her. No questions. No questions. No okay, thank you. And uh, now uh, I introduce our development officer. Uh, Mr. Amitabh Ghosh, and uh, over to you, sir. Uh, you take up the session. Thanks to everybody. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Thanks to everybody, everybody for joining this program. Dr. Bishira Engineering College Group has four colleges and several engineering trades and other trades, pharmacy, polytechnic, bachelor of optometry, medical lab technology, etc. are uh, taught here. Dr. Bishirai Engineering College is a very eminent college you know in Eastern India. It has a huge infrastructure and a good number of quality faculty. So our management <coughs> to outreach to surrounding students in a view that the students of neighboring schools should use our laboratory to learn science. I thank the principal Gayatri Madam of Amrita School uh, that she is the first to respond to our initiative <laughs> positively. Our special thanks and regards to her. It is the beginning. It is the beginning only. Uh, more uh, program uh, will come up in future, I think. And initially it was decided that some hands-on projects would be taken up uh, in collaboration with our college, Sujit Babu, your teacher, and uh, probably Tripti Madam, uh, I am not seeing her in this book, uh, visited our laboratory, and uh, it was decided that some projects regarding arsenic, uh, crystal, etc., color crystal, would be taken up. But due to the COVID pandemic, it was not possible. But uh, yet the principal requested me for an uh, for another program, online program. I again thank her for this. Uh, uh, for uh, I uh, thank her for her undaunting spirit. She thinks about her uh, thinks about the welfare of her students, and she is using us in this COVID pandemic online mode. Students should keep in mind that science does not mean, reading science does not mean being scientific. You will see several scientists who are scientists, but uh, full of prejudice. That is the problem in our society. Reading science is successful only when you make your mind scientific. In this uh, COVID situation, we are working from home. And during the last seven days, I was reading a book that is the life of Galileo. And you know that Ptolemy was the first man. He was also a scientist who said, that art is in the center of the universe and sun is moving around the earth. 
Later, Copernicus told that no, Ptolemy was wrong. Earth is moving around the sun and sun is static. But nobody believed him because he could not show it to the people. Then Galileo came and Galileo discovered the telescope and he showed that not Ptolemy but Copernicus was correct and he wrote a book. The name of the book was Discourse, that means dialogue. Galileo was intuition for saying the truth. And uh, if you uh, read his biography, you will see that he is requesting people, influential people at that time, to keep an eye on the telescope. But they are not keeping their eyes on the telescope, but doing argument with him and trying to uh, prove him as a liar. In this book, he tells that you, well, if you stop thinking, then science is dead. My students, future is in your hands. So you must become scientific. You must think and you must uh, obey your teachers and you must uh, um, uh, use the process of science. What is the? Uh, what is that? The science is about observation, experimentation, and then coming to the decisions. But the problem is, we observe but cannot do not experiment, and we jump to the conclusion. That is the problem of getting scientific of being scientific in mind. So I hope that through this program, you have been enlightened about several things uh, which you can use, you can think, and you can invent. I thank again the principal of your school. I thank Dr. Ovijit. I thank Sukalpa Madam. I thank our principal and head of the research and development cell of BCREC and the principal of Polytechnic, Dr. Bishirai Polytechnic, Dr. Chandan Ghosh. And uh, I thank special thanks to Komolika Tiari because uh, when I visit uh, Sevareli school, uh, then Komolika accompanies me. I render my special thanks to her and overall i thank dr rapno kirti rai whom you are not seeing here but you know uh, i am informing you that uh, he is doing the youtube live of this program if you visit our youtube channel uh, that means youtube channel of dr bishira engineering college you will see the whole program recorded there. I request Principal Madam and uh, her representatives in this program uh, that please take several such program, send your students to our college. Idea Lab approved by AITC, AICT uh, has been added uh, to the infrastructure, huge infrastructure, already huge infrastructure of BCDI College. Idea Lab, uh, from the name of the uh, lab, you understand that Idea Lab is such a thing that you will innovate there. And it is open to all, open to all students of Durgapur and West Bengal. Maybe that college students, maybe that school students, you use it. Thanks to all. Stay safe. Use sanitizer. Use marks. Because you are the future of our nation. And we depend on you. So you must protect yourself. Thank you.
मैडम सुकल्पा मैडम योर स्पीकर इज ऑफ ओ सर और हेड्स सर चंदन सर कैन आई कैन वी कंक्लूड द प्रोग्राम Yes, ma'am. Yes. One second. So, uh, time. It is now one uh, ten. Uh, it is the uh, time to conclude the session. Okay, we please conclude. Okay, thank you, sir, and thank you, everybody, and once more, thank you all of you to join the webinar, and thank you. So we close the session now. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everybody.